So this is going to be a demonstration on how to get OpenShift Origin 1.3 running on a uh, on a machine and get an actual application hosted in that. And it's going to be end to end. I find that a lot of the demonstrations I find are either operate at a very high level on an op already operational cluster or um, do very trivial things, but don't link it end to end into something that you could actually use. Uh, so I'm going to start from the very beginning. Um, and work my way all the way through it um, using a new feature in Origin 1.3 called uh, in the OC command called o OC cluster up, which will set up a containerized version of OpenShift on the local machine automatic automatically all in one all in one command. It's really convenient for getting up and running with a basic OpenShift environment. Um, so the first thing I've done, and I've already done this because I tried this. Tried to include this in the demo just to do it completely in the end, but uh, it took too long. So uh, I'm here in DigitalOcean. I've started up a new droplet. It's a CentOS 7 droplet, and I just started it up. I've never logged into it. Um, also in DigitalOcean, I own this domain uh, here, and I'm going to use it for this demo. And so we've got two uh, CNames set up routing to this new droplet. So we're going to log into this thing. All right, and uh, we're just gonna, uh, we're already root, so I don't have to worry about sudo and all that kind of stuff. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install a few packages. So we need, uh, you have to install Docker because uh, the OC command is gonna do a containerized installation of OpenShift, so Docker needs to be set up. I'm gonna install wget and git just because uh, wget to pull down the client, uh, the OpenShift client tools, and then git um, for later on in the demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And again, this uh, hopefully won't take very long, but I, I didn't want to cut here just to show a, a seamless install experience so that you can know what to expect. We can go ahead and look at what we're going to do next. Um, here in uh, OpenShift Origin under Docs cluster up down, uh, you can see the installation instructions for doing OC cluster up on Linux. There's just a few uh, preparation steps which involve uh, changing one Docker configuration file and pulling down the uh, OC client binary. And so we're going to do that next. <coughs> so now that we have this installed, we're going to go and uh, change that Docker configuration file. The line you want to change is right here, insecure registry. OpenShift uses an embedded Docker registry, and so you have to tell Docker to trust the, um, the embedded registry that OpenShift has. Uh, because you don't know what the IP address is, uh, the, the registry runs in a pod in the OpenShift environment, and it could get an address anywhere in this range. So we just tell it to trust any registry that falls in that range. And after that, we can start up Docker. Okay, the next thing we need to do is download the client tools. So here's step three. If we click here, it's going to take us to the release page. And if we scroll down, you can see uh, client tools for Linux 64-bit. That's what I want. So I'm going to copy that. Come over here, wget, pull that down. I'm going to extract that. All right, and now I've got this OpenShift client tools folder. And the OC binary is what we want. Just to make it easy to put it on something that's already on the path, I'm going to copy OC to user bin, user local bin. Then after that, I can um, remove these. All right, so we've run OC. Now it's on the path. We're getting it here. So after that, uh, we can actually do. The, uh, if we go back to the tutorial here, step four is running OC cluster up. I'm going to run it with a slight variation because I have a DNS resolvable name. Um, just to make this whole presentation look prettier, I'm going to tell it what my public resolvable name is, and then it will use that coming up. So I got OC cluster up, and then public host name is openshift.sjinx.me. So you'll see it going through the steps here. Um, it's basically pulling down the different components of OpenShift um, from the Docker Hub and then uh, doing the configuration and 
setting up certificates, creating all of the internal resources, and then it's, it will bring up the cluster. It also starts out by logging you in as a default user called developer, whose password is developer, and you don't have admin access there. You can log in as the admin, but we're not going to do that because we're, we're kind of going through the developer workflow here. Almost there. Yes, this is one of those things that if you run it again, it happens much more quickly because all this stuff's already configured and all the images have already been cached and things like that. Again, I'm wanting, you know, no, no uh, hand waviness. I just wanted to go through the whole thing. So if I do a OC, who am I? You can see I am logged in as developer. It also creates a uh, initial project for you. So if you go OC projects, you can see that I'm on my project. So um, from here, what we can do is we can start a sample application. So uh, I think I've already taken this out, but Ruby EX, there we go. So OpenShift has a number of sample applications that you can pull down just to make sure that everything is working right. Uh, so these are not Docker, these are not Docker images. These are actual source code. So this is a Ruby application and you'll see that there's no Docker file here. There's, and there's no uh, instructions on how for how OpenShift knows how to make this into a container image so they can be deployed in OpenShift. Um, OpenShift uses something called STI, that's source to, uh, source to, I'm blanking on it now. <laughs> uh, but basically turns uh, source code into a container. And so what we can do here is um, run this command. So this is going to create a new application. It's going to use this uh, S2I image, and it's going to build the uh, Ruby example app from GitHub. So if we hit that, we see a lot of um, output come out. And so you can see here that it is going to use the Ruby 2.0 builder. <laughs> and that this is the uh, image, that's a S2I, source to image. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Anyway, um, and it creates a number of resources, which I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through one by one in a subsequent video. For now, I'm just, this is just gonna be an overview video, but you can uh, say OC get all, and you can see all the resources that were created basically as in, in response to that new app call. Um, if we do OC get pods and watch, we can see that the Ruby builder is running right now. And if we stick here for long enough, uh, the builder will complete and it will push the image to our integrated um, Docker, Docker image uh, registry. So if I can do this fast enough, OC logs follow build, you can see that it's it's done the it's done building and it's now pushing the uh, the Ruby example image that it built from source to the integrated Docker registry. So when this completes, it gets to like nine of ten. I'm gonna exit out so we can watch what it's doing at a pod level. Soon. The way this is set up, the do uh, Docker uses uh, a loopback LVM volume, so it's not the quickest. But if we go in here, you can see the deploy um, pod going out, and it sets up the environment for the Ruby application, and you can see the actual Ruby pod running here. And in the end, only the Ruby pod ends up running. And so the, the build this is finished, and if you wanted to see, you know, what the build, what the log from the build was, that's OC logs, the name of the build container. You can see how your build went. If it failed, you can look in here to find find out why. So if we go to uh, OC get services, you can see that we've got our Ruby application here. Now, um, if you're familiar with Kubernetes. Then at this point, if you wanted access to this application, you'd have to set up some sort of node port 
or have a um, you know an HA proxy HA proxy pod running that would proxy your traffic from outside the cluster to inside. OpenShift has that built in, so uh, into something called the OpenShift router. And so all you have to do is do an uh, OC expose, and so you can say uh, that's export expose uh, service Ruby example. And I'm going to go ahead and give it the host name to use. By default, it's going to use a, a prefix that you could have defined when you did your OC cluster up. But um, I'm going to say my app. All right. And so when we do that, we can do OC get route and see that there's now, now a route, route. Um, when the router receives traffic that's destined for this host name, it's going to route that traffic to our Ruby uh, example application inside the cluster. So we can go ahead and give that a try if we want to. Um, let's see here. So if we hit that. Here's the Ruby application that's running inside OpenShift. And you can see that there's well, lots of demos use uh, XP, IO, um, and wildcard DNS, and stuff like that. This can really show you how you can actually use, you know, what, what people use in real life, real host names, real subdomains to host applications. Um, also, along with this, the, the OpenShift console actually functions too. It's got a self-signed certificate, so you'll have to go in here. Um, but you can log in with your developer credentials that OC cluster up creates, um, which is just developer and developer by default. You log in. And here we can go into that default project that was created for us. And here's our example Ruby application with our route right here. If we click on that, then you know, it brings us up to that page there. Um, so you can see, you know, this, this is actually a legitimate way to do that. And I, I did it in, I'm not sure how long this video is now, but probably around five minutes from starting up an instance in the cloud to actually having OpenShift running and then having my application running on it and then having a real subdomain route to it. So uh, it's really, really nice.